The following is a sample from the New York Open Center's podcast series. You can see our website for full program ordering details. Okay, so we're a varied, we are, we're a varied group, which is, which is good. I find that the people with ambition tend to kick the people without ambition in the butt, and the people without ambition tend to humble the people with ambition. So it, it creates a nice balance. If you have a whole, whole room of, of, of alpha personalities and go-getters and people who with very specific uh, goals in mind, it can limit, it can limit the, the scope of the class. So we have a nice balance of serious and casual, professional, amateur uh, writers. Uh, let me ju I just want to say a few, th few words about myself so you know who, who I am and why I'm here. Uh, I started out as a reporter and as a journalist. I used to work uh, in the magazine world. Uh, and in my late 20s, I sort of hit the wall. Uh, I realized that I was, I was very good at writing about the world out there, but I really didn't have a clue who I was. Uh, I had come to New York to be a serious writer, and I was doing journalism. It wasn't feeding me at any deep level. Um, I was also facing personal crises uh, that the writing I was doing didn't address in any way. So I was in crisis uh, when I quit my job. I left New York. I sort of took off on the Dharma bum trail for about 10 years and um, studied with a lot of teachers and, and started writing for alternative magazines. Uh, and one of those magazines was called Common Boundary. I don't know how many of you were, ever read Common Boundary, but I used to do the back page uh, of Common Boundary magazine for years. And my editor there asked me to do a piece about, uh, about the epidemic of incest uh, in the United States. And this was something I didn't know anything about. Uh, it was intriguing to me. Um, so I started doing what I do, did as a journalist, which was talking to people, doing my research, reading books. Uh, and as I was talking uh, to doing my interviews, which, you know, you get very good at sort of blanking yourself out while you're getting other people's stories, you know, sort of sucking the stories out of other people and staying behind a, a, a wall yourself, um, there was a resonance in me. And I realized that the stories that they were telling um, had a lot to do with my story had a lot to do with my family and the house that I had grown up in. And for the first time, I included myself in a piece of journalism uh, and discovered the first person pronoun. Um, and when I did that, when I started using the, the forbidden I in my work, everything opened up for me. The whole thing opened up. And I remembered why I wanted to write in the first place. I connected to so many stories right under my nose in my own life. And all of a sudden, everything, there, were, there were so many possibilities as a writer. There were so many things to discover. Uh, when I was just doing journalism and doing nonfiction, um, uh, you know, report, repertorial kinds of nonfiction, things felt very limited topically. They were very limited to the, little, to the particular narrow little niche uh, headline that you were trying to write about. When I started writing about writing personally, autobiographically, uh, and using writing as a, as a vehicle for self-exploration, I felt like my creative life began. That was a sample from the New York Open Center's podcast series. You can see the full program ordering details at our website, opencenter.org.